Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Elisa's Eats and today I'm going to show you how to make these spaghetti and meatballs from Lady and the Tramp. I'm so excited because it's such a cute little thing you can do for Valentine's Day or for yourself if you just want a giant mound of spaghetti and meatballs. Here you are, the best spaghetti in a town. These are the ingredients you're going to need. For the meatballs, half beef and half pork mince, freshly shaved parmesan cheese, garlic powder, freshly crushed garlic, salt and pepper to taste, one egg, small brown onion finely chopped, some fresh breadcrumbs, tomato sauce, water, plain flour for rolling the meatballs, and oil for frying. I'm using olive oil. For the sauce, you're going to need a brown onion roughly chopped, tomato paste, this one has some mixed herbs in it, some finely chopped celery and carrot, crushed tomatoes, balsamic vinegar, fresh crushed garlic, chili powder, chicken stock cube, mixed Italian herbs, and some sugar in case your sauce gets too acidic. This is only a small amount of chili powder. You might be a bit afraid if you don't like spice. Highly recommend adding this because it gives a bit of warmth to the sauce. It doesn't actually make it spicy. Salt and pepper to taste, fresh Parmesan cheese, fresh Italian parsley, and some pasta. We're using spaghetti. So what we're gonna do first is make our tomato pomodoro sauce. I like making this first before the meatballs, that way the flavors really get time to incorporate into the sauce. Highly recommend doing this, it's also just a bit easier. So what we're gonna do first to make the sauce is heat up some olive oil into our saucepan. And on a medium high heat, we're going to saute our chopped onions until they've got a light brown color. This adds flavor, it's a really important step. A little trick here that you can do is you can take a little pinch of salt while frying your onions. This helps draw out moisture from the onions and make them browner quicker. Then we're going to add our garlic and stir it for about a minute until it becomes nice and aromatic. We add the garlic in afterwards because if you add it with the onions, it can burn and give a bit of flavor. You don't want that. When I put garlic in a recipe, it's more of a suggestion. I'm one of those people where it says, put one clove, I'll put three. So add to whatever you like, no judgment. Then we're gonna add our celery and carrot and stir again for a couple of minutes until they become a little bit softened. Then we're going to add our crushed tomatoes, tomato paste, spices and stock cube, salt and pepper to taste. Stir it around, put the lid on for about five, 10 minutes, just let that incorporate. Then we're going to add our balsamic vinegar. This helps give it a bit of acidity and it's really nice. You can also use red wine here, but I find this gives lovely acidity to the sauce. Then we're gonna put the lid on, put the heat down onto low and let it simmer for about 20 minutes while we make our meatballs. So while our sauce is simmering, we're going to make our meatballs. And this gets really messy, but really fun. Sorry, hurry up. Sorry. Never would actually cook like this for people. My hair's always up or in nets and shit. So you just have it down for the aesthetic. It's fashion. <laughs> First off, what we're going to do is we're going to put our water into our breadcrumbs and let them sit for about five minutes so the water can absorb into it. Then we're going to place our mince, onions, parmesan cheese. Of course, you can add more. I'm never going to judge you on the amount of cheese you put in your meatballs. Sauce, breadcrumbs and water, spices, egg, and we're going to mix it all together with our hands. You can also put this in a standing mixer with a paddle attachment, but there's something about using your hands that just gives it a nice homemade feel. And also, I find they come out a bit more tender using my hands. Now that our meatball mixture has formed, we're just gonna let this sit for about five to 10 minutes to let the flavors mix through. Then we're going to take a couple of tablespoons of mixture, roll it between our hands, then lightly dust it in some plain flour, then set it aside on a plate, and then we're gonna fry them up. Adding a bit of the flour on the outside just helps get them nice and brown when we fry them. If you want your meatballs to be the exact same size, you can also use a little ice cream scoop to get the exact same, but I mean, it's homemade, who cares? It's, it's more rustic that way. So now that our meatballs are done, we're going to get some olive oil and put them in a large frying pan and brown them on all sides. So in my large frying pan, I'm gonna heat a good few tablespoons of olive oil on a medium high heat. Then I'm gonna place the meatballs in. Don't overcrowd the pan, otherwise they won't brown properly. And for the first minute or so, do not move them. Let them get a nice brown crust. Then continue to move them around on all sides until they're nice and golden brown. Now 
while our meatballs are finishing cooking, we're going to take a bar mix to blend and puree our sauce. If you don't have this, you can use a blender. And I highly recommend you do this because it makes it strangely creamy. I think it's because of the root vegetables and celery. When you blend it all together, the flavor completely changes to if it was chunky. Of course, if you want a chunky sauce, leave it be, but I highly recommend you try it at least for once in your lifetime. Mm. Then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of oil to this sauce just to really get it all incorporated and blitz it one more time. Now that we've pureed the sauce, this is a great time to taste it and see if you need to add any salt or pepper. Now, if you find that it's a bit too acidic, add a bit more sugar. If you find it's not acidic enough, add a bit of more balsamic vinegar. Mine's perfect the way it is. Now, with your pureed sauce, place it over our meatballs. It's spitting up. Oh my God. Oh no, watch out. Don't let it very rude to spit. This is why we wear aprons. Stir them around a little bit so nothing's sticking to the bottom. Place the lid on top. Then we're gonna let them simmer on low heat until the meatballs are cooked. This should take about another 10 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to boil some water with a little bit of salt. Cook the pasta according to the package. I always do it about one or two minutes under the time so it comes out nice and al dente as it continues to cook slightly in the sauce. So for our spaghetti, we're probably gonna cook it for about eight or so minutes. Once your pasta's finished cooking, drain it, but reserve at least a quarter cup of the pasta water. This has a nice starchiness to it, and when we add some of the sauce to the pasta, you wanna have the water in there so it really sticks to the pasta. So now we've got our sauce and meatballs done, our pasta with a bit of reserved cooking water in there, and a plate, some freshly chopped parsley and some fresh parmesan cheese. And what we're gonna do now is put a little bit of sauce into our pasta, stir it around, place it onto our plate, and then top it off with some meatballs, cheese and parsley. So normally I would probably put at least half the sauce into this pasta at this point, but I want to recreate what the pasta looks like in Lady and the Tramp, and it was a lot more yellow, so less sauce on it, and the meatballs really stood out. So to plate it up, we're just going to leave it at this point, but in all honesty, I'd put so much more sauce on this because I'm a saucy little mink. Whenever I'm plating something up, like meatballs for this instance, I always like putting an odd number on there. It just looks a bit more pleasing to the eyes, but of course, you can fill the whole plate with meatballs if you want to, but just because we want to be fancy like Lady and the Tramp, we're putting three on here. Okay guys, so that's how you make my version of Lady and the Tramps spaghetti and meatballs. It smells so good in here and I just can't wait to eat it and I know Flavia can't wait either, so let's eat. Yee! I'm so excited. You're gonna love this because I don't think I've made this sauce for you before. I don't think so. No. I don't think you've made any of this. No. I have just... I'm very excited! This is actually our breakfast. Mm. The pasta still has a nice mm. tiny little bite to it because I like it a bit more al dente. But oh, it's so good. That is stunning. Oh. And so you can always just, we've got the rest of the meatballs and sauce on the stove and I'm probably just gonna down it in sauce after this because I love sauce. Let's do it. But yes, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm really excited. But yeah, try, try the meatball. meatball. It smells beautiful. Sniff it like a dog. Yeah. I mean, Lady in the Tramp, that, that works. It's the mixture of the pork wow. and the beef. Mm. They're really, they're so tender. I know. They are so tender. So that's why we brown them on the outside mm. and then like steam it on the inside. Oh my God, so flavorful. Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, Ooh. people fall in love with you. I've already got this one, so it's easy. But yes, anyway. Oh, we would, no, they did the little nose. Hold on, so it's like, oh, get my ears out of the way. Get your ears out Yeah, it's just way. like the whole like, oh, it's not working. Oh. oh. Hey. Oh. I just feel like a clown now. <laughs> you look like one. I feel very fashionable right now. It's actually all the rage. It's a look. Woof. <laughs> You're driving me barking mad. I'll go. I actually like that one. Love you. Love you too, my pasta. With your love, the one you'll find on the chant of man to hear. Checked. I am checked. <laughs> Sorry, hold on, wait, wait, go around me, go around me. <laughs>